I don't think it's going to be long before Brent and I are together. I, don't, I just have this feeling. Um, and Jesus seems to be Jesus seems to be preparing me for this. It's like he's um he gave me the Gale commandments, and then he showed me myfitnesspal.com to help me to get beautiful for my husband. Of course, Brett thinks I'm already beautiful, but you know, like like I've said many times, um, I've wanted to marry him for ever, ever since 1991. When he called me on the phone, I remember when he called me, I was so shocked. I couldn't believe the world famous Brad Spider was in love with me. And I was a very devout Christian. In my 20s, I surrendered to go to the mission field. And I turned down a chance to become an Air Force officer. I was accepted to Air Force Officers Training School at age 20. 21, I believe it was, and um, but I prayed a prayer to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I'm going to be going to the Wednesday night prayer service at my church tonight, and if you want to tell me not to do take, not to go to the Air Force route, and you want me to do Bible college or maybe go to Baptist University of America, which was a school I was considering, then I will listen to you. I didn't expect anything to happen. I went to church that night, and they had a guest speaker, his, Dr. Roger Allison. Allison, he was the executive vice president of Baptist University of America. He was not supposed to speak. And the whole message was on the excuses we make not to do God's will. And, and then when I opened my Bible, all these random Bible openings seemed to indicate. Th this was before I left for the service. It was like the Lord was, all these random Bible openings seemed to indicate that he wanted me to go to Baptist University. I only had $20 on me. I had just gotten my bachelor's degree in health education. I graduated cum laude from Florida State University. And um, I, was, I had already done all the application and everything, the Air Force officers training. And I was out jogging and getting myself in shape for officers training school in Lackland which would have been at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. And they said I had a good shot of being accepted. But when I went to church that night, the pastor said, we've got a guest speaker. He wasn't supposed to be here tonight, but he's, there's been an, an illness in his family, and he had an emergency trip, and he came. He came down to, uh, to our church, and uh, he's going to be giving the message tonight. And he didn't know what I had prayed before I, you know, before I went to church. That whole message from beginning to end was like it was tailor-made for me. I went to him after the service and I told him my prayer to Jesus and everything. And he said, it sounds like, like the Lord speaking to you. So I said, well, what I'm going to do, I only have like $20 on me. I'm just going to take a Delta Airlines flight, call it Airlines, take a Delta Airlines flight, fly up to Atlanta. The school was in Decatur. And I didn't even know if they'd accept me or anything, but I just knew the Lord spoke to me. I, I, was, I was determined to live for Jesus as a young lady. So I went to school, and the Lord had gave me a job where I worked during the day, and I went to school at night, and I, was, I didn't even know what to major in. I had no idea, so I just kind of like picked. I let, them, I let the school choose some subjects for me. And then I, the whole first year, I was just living by faith and trusting Jesus, and I managed to make it through the year. So towards the end of the year, I, I, I got a job working as a secretary at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and that helped pay my tuition for the first semester, and I went part-time. Then the second semester, uh, you'd, you'd say, what were you going for? I guess for like a second bachelor's degree. I didn't know what the Lord wanted me to do. So, but, and the first month I was there, every single message in chapel seemed tailor-made for me. You know, looking back, I said, Lord, you know, I'm not on the mission field exactly. And I didn't know what the Lord wanted me to do. I didn't know if he wanted me to be a pastor's wife and he was just sending me there to get a husband or, or if he, 
I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I just knew he wanted me there. I still believe he wanted me there. My family was furious at me. I got accepted to Air Force Officers Training School, and I turned it down. Now, I've got, I am like this. And this is something the Jesuits and a lot of people don't understand. But you know, every time in my life when I have to make a decision between God and wealth or fame or money, I always choose God, almost always, when it comes to major decisions in my life. And this may be part of the reason why Jesus says I'm his favorite. Anyways... So I went there and I thought, well, what happens, Lord? I know you want to hear what. None of the guys there seemed really interested in me, and I didn't want to make it appear like I went there just to husband shop, because I, I mainly went there to do Jesus as well. And I was getting kind of, the first year, towards the end of the year, I ran out of money, and I had one day where I only had one chicken leg for the whole day, and I said, Lord, I must have made a mistake. I think I'm going to apply to Air Force Officers Training School again. So I, um... I applied again, but I said, but I want to condition it on this prayer, Lord. Please have them turn me down if this is not what you want. I thought I made a mistake. So the first year, I just kind of like took general studies, Bible doctrines courses, and it kind of helped me to solidify my beliefs, you know, because I I'd read the Bible, but I hadn't read it from cover to cover yet. So anyways, um, so I I kind of, I decided to go to a Southern Baptist church because I felt like they were a little too rigid and strict. And I think the Lord was actually trying to see if he could get me to lean away from the fundamental Baptist and go more Southern Baptist. But, but I ended up dating a Southern Baptist missionary doctor's son. And he, he asked, he propositioned me and wanted to go to bed with me. And I turned him down. I said, oh, no, I can't do that. That's wrong. I, I'm going to be a virgin for my husband. And, um... He, he just, boy, after I turned him down, he just dropped me like cold ice cube. I was devastated. So I said, I must have sinned by going to the Southern Baptist Church. I'm going to go back to the Fundamental Baptist Church. The Fundamental Baptist Church was a lot stricter. No pants. Of course, now I'm make, actually making a, they would, if a woman wore pants, it was a sin. Rock music's a sin. Uh, drinking and smoking, obviously, is a sin, you know, but. I mean, they were strict, so I figured that's where I'm going back. So I went back to BUA, back to Fundamental Baptist School. And this time I had some money saved up because when I, after the year at BUA, to make a long story short, what I'm trying to say is, ah, I might continue this workout. I'm down to 129 pounds. 129 pounds. <laughs> to make a long story short, I am... Um, so I went back, and the Lord seemed to tell me to, to surrender to the mission field and go to Japan. So um, I decided to study there. The Lord didn't lead me to a husband there. Actually, I think the Jesuits were using brain control on a lot of the guys there to cause them not to be interested in me because they knew about my Catherine the Great King David genetic profile, and I didn't. Anyways... I've always been like that. Whenever I have to make a major decision, I always go to God for guidance, and I always choose what the Lord wants. And I never choose money. Goodness, there's like a spot of. I never choose money. There's like, is there something? Am I imagining things? Oh, there is a light coming through there. <laughs> and so. I was like that. I turned down a chance to be an Air Force officer, which would have been financial security for me. And but who knows? But I don't know what would have happened. So, anyways, here's um. This is with a one-piece bathing suit here. <laughs> so, I really don't know what would have happened. Um. I I ended up going to Bible college, and um, I got a degree in humanities studying education and missions, I prepared to be a missionary teacher because the Lord didn't lead me to a husband at Baptist University. And I think part of my problem was I was too smart for the guys there, and they found me a little intimidating. I had, um, I, I have a very high IQ. In fact, my uh, Judge Terrence Jenkins and my men tell me I've got the highest IQ of any woman on the planet, so 
No, the Lord what the Lord the man, the man the Lord had for me was Brent Spiner. I said, but the Lord, and then why Brent Spiner? I mean, after he he led me to Brent Spiner after after the marriage, and I was so puzzled. Anyways, that was the first time in my life I had to make a decision that was very difficult, and I turned down. I was accepted to Air Force Officers Training School, but I turned it down for Jesus and went to Bible College, and I ended up graduating from Baptist University. This next time I had a major decision to make was in 1991. I had been st I had started writing Brent Spiner through his fan mail just about once a month just to share my life with him. I was married. I let him know that right up front. I showed him. I sent him a picture of myself and my son and my husband in church clothes. And let him know I was a born again Christian. And um, <clears throat> I just chose to write him because I wanted somebody that I could be open with. I felt I was feeling like I couldn't be myself in my strict fundamental Baptist church, King James only, you know, no rock music, no smoking. And I never smoked or drank my entire life, never been drunk, never smoked, never took drugs. And so I'm. I, I actually came from a pretty clean background, and that apparently was something Jesus needed to work on. I was very self-righteous, and he couldn't use me. So he allowed me to marry a man. I, I deliberately married a man who told me that he was a virgin, because to me that was really important as a young lady. I wanted somebody who saved themselves like I saved myself for my husband. And I found out during the marriage that making, I didn't, we didn't even hold hands during the dating period. We didn't kiss or anything. And I married him, which I was so proud of myself for that. But I ended up getting somebody who was very cold. He made love, kissing him was like kissing the wall. And when I watched Brent Spider portray data on Star Trek The Next Generation, he seemed like the total opposite of my husband. So I just wanted to write him just to write somebody who seemed like the man that the husband I could never have and which I figured I'd never would have and I didn't know if I was I didn't I wasn't 100% sure if Brent Spiner was like what I saw but when I saw the episode Pen Pals I saw parts of the real Brent Spiner that I admired so I opened up and told, I, I actually decided I'm going to completely open up to this guy I'm going to make him my friend because I need a friend because I'm not really a friend with my husband. I can't share all of my heart with my husband because he won't accept me the way I am. So, and then Brent Spiner fell in love with me from my letters and I ended up saying, he wrote me a, a form letter saying, thanking me for sharing my thoughts with him and he fell in love with me. So he wrote me a letter thanking me for sharing my thoughts with him and that he appreciated hearing my thoughts and and I thought, wow, he's reading my letters. So I decided to, I made a tape of singing for him, very similar to the, I sang the songs in the link underneath this video. And he fell in love with me from listening to my music. And within a month after he heard me sing, he started working on Old Yellow Eyes' back. And Brent told me that it, it's because he fell in love with me from hearing me sing. And, um, and then I didn't know that. I wasn't even planning on buying the album. Melody Rondeau sent it to me. I fell in love with him. He asked if he could come over when my husband was out. I had just I said this was the hardest to set another time in my life when I chose God over money or fame or anything. I said, I'm sorry, Brent, but I'm married. It would be wrong. I can't let you come over. But please let us be friends. And if you go into my writings, you will see that Jesus uh but it was very hard for me. The Forbidden Abyss Part 1 goes into this. Anyways, I have a feeling God gave me a promise in 1990. There's a place for us. Somewhere a place for us. I think we're getting close to that time. It might have something to do with the shield. So I'm excited. And I think Jesus is trying to make me beautiful for Brett. I'm about 129 now. My goal is to get to 126. I want to be beautiful for my husband because the Lord has made me wait so long.